everyone in today's video i'll show you how to crochet this striped cardigan i hope you will enjoy this video and if you do as always don't forget to hit subscribe like this video and let's get into it and to make this cardigan you will need a cotton double knit yarn i will be using two colors however you can also make this in solid but uh, as I am making size medium, I will need 5 of this beige and 3 of this grey. Whether you are making smaller or bigger size, you might as well need more or less yarn. Then I will need a measuring tape, scissors, stitch marker, needle and 4mm hook as well as 3.5mm hook. And I nearly forgot what you will need for buttons for your cardigan i have these four whole ones but if you do have only two that should be fine as well just bear in mind that it should be two and a half centimeters uh, wide just before we begin this is probably not a beginner friendly tutorial because there is quite a lot of counting as well as understanding where you would need to put the color changes to make sure that it is symmetrical but i will provide the measurements of mine which is medium size in description down below which you should be able to follow as i will be giving instructions to that but if you need a different size you will need to do some counting which means that you will basically need to understand the length of the cardigan which is in stitches as well as the width with which is in rows same for the sleeves the length goes in stitches while the width is in rows so i will talk about this more about each step in the video but yeah i just wanted to make you aware that it might be a bit difficult for beginners to get this right the first time now before you begin working on cardigan itself i would highly suggest doing a little swatch with your four millimeter hook doing double crochets so I did 14 double crochets and I did that for 4 rows and this little swatch will basically give me an idea to what size my each double crochet measures to as well as the row length and it is recommended to do a couple of stitches as well as a couple of rows as just basically it's easier to understand your gauge and to start doing the back panel you will need to measure from shoulder to shoulder whether you want it a bit dropped or quite tight and this length will determine how many rows you need to do you will also need to measure the length from your shoulder here down to where you want your cardigan to stop so basically either cropped or a bit longer and this length will determine how many you will need to chain now just before you begin your back i just wanted to show you the shape how it will look like and now the first thing you want to do is basically measure this part of the double crochet so that you can know how many you need to chain for the ribbing as well as for the double crochets and then you will also need to measure the length of the rows itself to figure out how many rows you will need to do so that you can then do a particular number of rows for the shoulder, for the middle part and another shoulder as well, as well as taking the changing colors into consideration to understand how many rows you will have and when you will be changing colors, especially if you are making different size. Now starting off, I will be using this cream color to start my back panel and once you have figured out how many you need to chain, grab your yarn, make a slip knot which you can do by making this loop and grabbing your tail through, just like this, put your 4mm hook in. And for the chain with the double crochets, I will be chaining 65. To do a chain, you want to yarn over and pull through, yarn over, pull through, and repeat this as many times as you need, which is again 65 for me. Now 
and I now have my chain of 65 which is basically going to be the length from the shoulder up until the ribbing here. Now you want to pull up a loop, take your hook out and grab a 3.5 millimeter one, put it in and you now will need to chain number of chains for your ribbing which is 16 for me. And these chains will be your working stitches so just to begin you want to chain one on top of that and that's gonna be your turning chain for your first row you want to skip the very first chain and go into the second one with a half double crochet to do that you want to yarn over go into that second chain pull up a loop and come back you will have three loops on your hook then you want to yarn over and pull through all three and this is what you will repeat for your ribbing so i will be doing that half double crochet with 3.5 millimeter hook total of 16 times And once you completed the half double crochets for your ribbing, so again this is 16 for me, you want to pull up on your last stitch to change to the 4mm hook and this is where you will be changing your hook every single time. So for the double crochets you will be doing is always 4mm one and for the ribbing it's 3.5mm one. Now in the remaining chains you will need to do double crochets and to do it you want to yarn over, go into your next chain, pull up a loop, you will have three on your hook, then yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two and that's your double crochet. One more time, yarn over, go into the next chain, yarn over and come back, then yarn over, pull through two, two times. And this is what you will repeat till the end of your chain. So I will have 65 double crochets. And just in case you want to follow the same exact tutorial, I will leave measurements of mine in the description below. So you can double check if that will fit you. But yeah, I'm just going to finish those double crochets till the end and I will meet you then. And I am now nearly at the end. I just have one chain left, so I'm going to do my double crochet. And this is how it will look. So you will have your double crochets and then it will go into the ribbing where you have your half double crochets. At the end, you want to chain three. Turn your work. And I'm not going to count this chain as a stitch, meaning that instead of going into second one, I will still do double crochet in this first one. So again, for row two, you will be doing double crochets into double crochets. And when you come to your half double crochets, you will switch your hook to the 3.5 one and do your half double crochets. So let me just finish those double crochets and I will meet you at the end. And I'm now nearly at the end of my row. Just wanted to show that um, you can either use a stitch marker to mark your first half double crochet. So basically the 16th counting from the bottom for me, it might as well be different number for you. Or you can just have a look and try to identify those double crochets versus half double crochets. So I'm just gonna finish doing my double crochets. And this is my last one here. I'm gonna pull up a loop to change my hook. And in the remaining 16 stitches, I will be doing half double crochets, but from row two, it's gonna go into the back loop. So if you turn your work like this, you should be able to see those Vs. Let me just pull it up. So this is your regular stitch that you would normally go. 
and this time you always want to go into this back loop so through one loop only so I'm just gonna go back yarn over go into that stitch but into the back loop only yarn over and come back yarn over and pull through all three and this is what creates that ribbing effect basically by going into the back loop you are doing the ribbed rows so you want to finish your half double crochet stitch into the back loop till the end of your row and once you are done you want to chain one and turn your work so remember if you end up on here you will be chaining three and on this end you will be chaining one where no chains count as a stitch so you don't count that chain one or chain three as a stitch now for row three you will again be doing half double crochets into the back loop only for your ribbing and then move to the double crochets for the remaining stitches making sure you switch the hook in between those so again i'm gonna go in yarn over go into the back loop pull up a loop and pull through three i will repeat this 16 times and then switch to a four millimeter hook and then do double crochets in the rest going through the both loop and i just finished my row three as you can see this chain i have here doesn't have stitch above so i'm not doing stitch into that my last double crochet ends into the double crochet once you're done with your row three again you will be chaining three just to start your next row and this is how it will look so far as you can see the ribbing is a bit smaller than your double crochets and this is what you want and now you will be repeating row two and three as many times as you need until you reach the length of your shoulder so as the cardigan is basically worked this way this is your bottom ribbing that will be built on and this is the very top so you now will be doing rows until it's long for your one shoulder so let me just finish mine and i will come back to show you how to change color for these stripes now i have five rows completed and this is where my first color change will come in so i haven't done my last stitch because this is where we will change color it might be different for you so you might have different amount of rows but just to show you how to attach new color so on your last stitch still in that current color you want to go and do double crochet so pull up a loop to have three loops yarn over pull through two and don't pull through the last two loops instead drop this old color grab your new one put that around your hook and pull through this is how it will look then into that new color you would chain three turn your work and then start working in your secondary color the same way you would do with your old color basically so you just change color on last stitch and continue as normal and for each stripe I will be doing two rows so i will continue with this color for the next two rows then change color again and just in case you have finished your last row in this color on this side i'll show you how to change color here too as it is slightly different and if you need to change color on this side you will yarn over go into the back loop of your stitch pull up a loop so you have three drop your old color and grab your new one pull it through all three and chain one then turn your work and this is how you will change color if you ever need to change it on this side 
and this is a back panel I'm just showing it in front because uh, I can obviously do it on the back but you will stop doing those full rows until you're happy with how long it is for your shoulder then you will leave some stitches to do it until you reach the length for your next shoulder now once you have enough rows for one shoulder you will need to leave out some stitches to shape the neck hole basically and if your row that you need to do this is where you do your double crochets you will simply stop doing some stitches chain three turn your work and continue with the rows or if you need to finish your row and it will start from the double crochet you will need to finish off so let me just quickly finish remaining stitches I'm gonna chain one then cut my yarn leaving a bit of a tail pull it through I will then turn my work I will count the stitches and I will reinsert it so what I'm doing is I'm doing eight stitches that I will leave for the neck area I'm gonna go into the ninth one grab the yarn and chain three and that way I'm just gonna go and do my double crochets from this stitch And this is what you will need to do as well so you can either do your row up until here and then just chain three and skip the remaining or you will need to finish off and start from here depending how many rows you need so if your row started here you will be able to continue without finishing off but then if you need to finish that row here you will need to then finish off turn your work and skip these stitches and reinsert your yarn here now what I'm leaving is 8 stitches and this will depend on size but I would recommend if you're making smaller leave 6 stitches or so and if you're making bigger size maybe leave 10 or so. And now you will basically be making those rows the same way you did until you complete the rows for the length in between the shoulders. So let me do my rows and I will meet you then. And this is how it should look after you complete your rows for in between the shoulders. And once you are done with the middle rows, so basically in between the shoulders, it will need to be symmetrical. So like you have on this side, you will need to repeat this on the other side as well. And I will show you this in a second. But basically you should have your row symmetrically, meaning that uh, my first short row started with this beige and then straight away into gray and this is what I have on the other side so just make sure that it is symmetrical and now depending on where you need your first long row to be so if this is the row that you need to have those extra stitches here you will need to do foundation double crochet so as an example, I had 8 stitches here that I skipped and I will need to do 8 stitches here. So to do those foundation double crochets, you want to yarn over, go into the bottom of this double crochet. So just basically into here, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one only, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. This is how you do a foundation double crochet and you will need to do the same number you had on this side just continuously building them up so one more time yarn over go into the very bottom of your previous double crochet pull up a loop yarn over pull through one yarn over pull through two and two again so yeah and just like this you will be building on those rows so again, go into the bottom, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two, twice. And once you've got all the stitches that you had on the other side, you would just chain three. 
turn your work and continue as normal and if your row that should be with those extra stitches comes after this one where you finish here at the very top for next row just before you begin it you will need to chain and it is eight for me so that's my chain of eight and just because it is worked with double crochets i will need to chain another three then turn your work skip the first three and go into the one here but into the back so instead of working your chain this way you want to flip it over to have it from the wrong side and do your first double crochet into wrong side and it's into the fourth chain then do remaining stitches it's gonna be eight double crochets for me just like so and this is how it will look once you do all of the double crochets that you need this chain of three doesn't count so I have eight double crochets and after that I'm just gonna continue with the double crochets as normal from now on working into my row and on this side you will basically need to repeat everything you did here at the beginning so i'm gonna go and do four rows in this main color then two rows in gray and five rows in main color but you should repeat the same you did for your first shoulder part and I have my finished back panel here. So as you can see, I have 11 rows for shoulders, both of them, and 18 rows for this middle part. In between each gray, I have five rounds of cream, but this might be slightly different for you. But yeah, in general, it should just look something like this. This part for your shoulder, this is for the neck, and for your another shoulder. And now before you begin working on the front panel, you want to kind of see how many rows you will be doing. So front panels are the same two pieces that are made separately for both sides. And they are all then joined with the ribbing in front where your uh, buttons go in. So basically the ribbing I will be doing is pretty much the width of my six rows. So if you look at the six rows I have here, this is what the ribbing of mine will be. If you want to follow a different ribbing, you will need to measure that ribbing width before you start. And it will be done in single crochets with a four millimeter hook. So if you want different length ribbing for the front, you can basically do whatever you want and measure it. And if you are doing different, then measure the ribbing you want to do, divide it by two so you know the length of half of the ribbing and starting from the middle of your back panel, so the middle for me is here and these three rows would be half of my ribbing, meaning that my front panel will have 17 rows. So what you will need to do, whether you are doing the same ribbing as I will or different, basically understand the half of your ribbing that will be for half of the cardigan so the full ribbing would be standing in the middle here and as you are doing one side now you need half of it only and this is what it will be taking for mine so i know that i don't need these rows to be done when i'm doing the front panel because the ribbing will cover that so what i'm doing is I am counting the rows for half of my back panel minusing these three that leaves me with 17 rows and I know that 17 rows will be the number for my front panel you will need to do the same just basically do the mats and now another thing 
that you will need to do is once you know those 17 rows that will be for your ribbing so it's gonna be that much for me and by doing those rows I will need to merge into 11 so six rows will basically kind of disappear and this is a video from the future just to show you this is the six middle rows of my cardigan and this is the ribbing I keep talking about which basically lays over on top of each other so that's why we only calculating this once and yeah you need to decide on the ribbing which is 15 single crochets for me if you want different you would need to do a swatch measure that and see how many rows it takes then you will need to count how many rows of half it takes so half the ribbing it takes three of mine so i'm minusing that out of the total rows for half the cardigan and then this is how i know how many rows i will need to do from the front piece let me grab the front panel and show you how it will look so this is how the front panel will look like as you can see it starts exactly the same as by doing the back panel so i have four rows just like the regular rows here and instead of 17 rows that we start with it ends with 11 rows so this is what i need if you for example have 12 rows for shoulder you will need to merge that into 12 and so on so this is why important to calculate the rows to see how much the front ribbing takes up that you know how many you need to start with and how many you need to end up with but uh, where these rows are disappearing is basically if you can take a closer look into this I went from this side up till here and I did a few different stitches just to go smaller so from double crochet into half double single slip stitch and then I turned to go back the other way so I basically skipped these stitches and I only went into them with the next full row and I repeated this three times two rows each meaning that I got rid of six full rows and if you need to get rid of odd number rows for example seven or nine I will show you how to do that as well but basically just to start off I'm gonna do four rows like I normally do so you want to repeat few rows of the first cardigan rows and I just did those four rows like I said which is again 16 half double crochets into the back loop only using 3.5 millimeter hook and I did 65 double crochets with 4 millimeter hook that's the same exact four rows I did at first for my back panel so you should repeat yours as well and you might have three or five rows depending what size you are doing you just really need to see where you will be placing those half rows and my next row is actually a half row so I'm just gonna show you how I'm doing that so first I'm gonna go into those stitches as I normally do I am then switching my hook and instead of doing 65 double crochets I will only be doing 45 so I will end up about here so let me do those 45 double crochets and I will need to add the end and I just did 45 double crochets this is how much I'm leaving from the top and just imagine I'm leaving 20 stitches so if you have less stitches you might as well leave less till the top or if you have more you might as well do more so just bear in mind that I have 20 that's about one third of my full length then just to smooth this out you want to do half double crochet in the next stitch single crochet in next and slip stitch in the next one and this is how it will look as you can see it kind of blends in by doing those lower stitches let me bring you closer it kind of smooths in and now this is where I will change color but if you are not changing you would chain one turn your work 
and basically work into the stitches going back. Now I am changing color, so I'm going to cut this off and pull it through. So I'm going to turn my work and I'm going to insert my yarn into this slip stitch. Just like so. Chain one, which will act as my slip stitch. Then single crochet above single crochet, half double crochet above half double. I'm just going to pull the tail on the wrong side. And I'm basically going to do the double crochets now. And that's going to be 45 for me. And once you've finished off going with those double crochets and then you're ribbing. So this is how it will look. So I have two half done rows and now I'm going to go with a normal row. I try not to do more than two half rows at a time. And now I will be doing full row. So again it starts as always. And I will show you what to do when you come closer to those half double crochets and single crochets of the halfly done row. Now when you do come to an end, you will be basically just doing double crochets along your current row and then into the row before. So that's my row 4 and you will just basically be do a full row like so. So where you have your half double, you will do double again, double above single and above slip stitch as well. So let me just do this. And now I just have the slip stitch here. So it's of the gray row as well as this beige. And what I like to do in here, so if I only went into this slip stitch, it will basically create this hole here, as you can see. There's quite a big gap. What you want to do instead is basically decrease it looks like two stitches but it's only one and you can do this by yarning over going into your slip stitch pulling up a loop yarning over and pulling through then do the same into this double crochet where your slip stitch is go into that pull up a loop yarn over pull through two and then yarn over pull through all three just like that you basically get rid of that gap that creates when you do your stitches normally and this decrease looks like it's two stitches but it's actually only one so you haven't made any extra stitches or decreased anything you're just basically using that spot to cover it up and just to show you one more time so basically this is your slip stitch this gray one as well as this beige one these are two slip stitches on top of each other and this double crochet here is your stitch that you have your slip stitches in. So you yarn over, go into your slip stitch, pull up a loop and yarn over, pull through two and then yarn over, go into your double crochet your slip stitch is at, yarn over, pull through three to close it up. Then finish off by doing double crochets in the remaining stitches. And this is how you do your row above your half finished rows. So all you left to do now is basically alternate normal rows that you do in full as well as those half rows to make from whatever row you need to have for the front into the shoulder number amount of rows if that makes sense. I'm myself merging from 17 rows into 11 and I'm currently at seven rows at the bottom and five rows at the top so i'm just going to continue doing this with each half row going lower so for example i have 45 double crochets here i will do 40 next time so it goes lower 
and if you have all the number of those half rows that you have to do for example I have six so I can do this three times by doing two rows but if you have seven rows that you need to do as half finished ones you can do your half row finish off turn your work and insert your yarn and hook in here to do just a normal row but I'll show you this later on let me just come to the row where I need to do half and I'll show you how to do it and I'm here to do my half row so for the second time doing it I am actually doing 40 double crochets while I did 45 at this point so it just goes a bit lower with each row I'm gonna do half double crochet in next single crochet in next and slip stitch now i would chain one turn my work and repeat this backwards but just to show you in case you need to do singular half row only you would finish off here turn your work attach your yarn into this very first stitch here by doing chain three and just do double crochets just starting from this end here but yeah, I'm going to finish my front panel and I'm going to come back to show you what rows exactly I did so that if you are following the same exact pattern as mine, that you can basically repeat all same rows. But yeah, I'm just going to finish mine and I will come back at the end. So I have my front panel here. Just to repeat again, I have... 16 half double crochets for the ribbing going into the back loop and 65 double crochets for the main row i did four rows as normal then for my fifth row i did this row here which had 45 double crochets then half double single and slip stitch then for next sixth row, I did the same exact thing, just going down below, which I showed you. Then I have two normal rows here after these two half. So two normals. And again, I did half rows. This time it only had 40 double crochets instead of 45. The very first one ends here while this one ends here as you can see so i did these two then again i did two normal rows and last time i did my half rows they had 35 double crochets as always then half double single slip stitch chain and turn and go all the way back and i finished off by doing three full rows and again this has 17 counting on the bottom and it has 11 here which will match exactly the same as my shoulder part with the back panel yours might be slightly different as well from mine just to give you an idea how it should be looking so you would be making those half rows to shape into this kind of cardigan looking piece if that makes sense and i do apologize if it's not clear uh, it is quite difficult to explain different sizes you just kind of have to work it out and see what what kind of rows and stitches works for you best and once you've got one piece done you want to make this one more time which will act as your other piece if you flip it around so just make sure that you have your tails on the opposite side this time and you hide it on its own wrong side so this is actually my right hand side piece and I will be making another one and then I will flip it over to be my right hand side piece. So yeah, I'm going to repeat mine just to have both of them and I will come back. And I just wanted to show you how I hide my tails because you will have quite a lot of them. So you want to have your work wrong side up, have your needle and just go under your stitches like so and make sure that you at least go few directions so make your way one way and then come back the other 
and I'm gonna do this one more time just to make sure that it's secure you can then cut it off and repeat the same with all of the tails including your back panel front and as well when you get to the sleeves by doing uh, the same thing on the wrong side now before you start doing your sleeve you will need to count how many stitches you will need for your sleeve length as basically the length of the chain will determine your sleeve length so my full sleeve doesn't fit in here but basically here's my cuff and then the remaining length of the sleeve and it does measure to about 51 centimeter in total so you will need to measure your arm or sweater that you like to see what length you need your sleeve to be and then kind of calculate how many double crochets you will need to do as well as how many stitches for the cuff so what I did was 63 double crochets plus 16 single crochets and plus one on top of that chain totaling uh, to 80 chains now you will need to do your math if you're doing something different and once that's done we can go into the tutorial on how to do it and basically this is what you will need to do stitch wise and then row wise you will need to measure your little swatch again to see how many rows you need for your sleeve to fit you for me this measures to about 42 centimeters and I did 30 rows in total this is how I ended up with this pattern having five on this side and then only four rows in between the colors so if your number of rows is different you will need to work out when you need to change your color so just before you go into making that sleeve you will need to sit down and kind of see what pattern you will be able to work out as always i recommend doing if you for example end up with an even number you can also have more color changes than i do and so on and you can also have more rows at the very beginning and the end as this will be the same so if the numbers don't match you can always have more rows at the very beginning and the end or you can simply just if you're making smaller size than i am you can take off two rows for example and do four in main or if you do make bigger size you can add up one row on both sides and then follow the same layout as i did so that would be kind of easier way to make it a bit bigger or smaller but then again feel free to work out the pattern for yourself to do the sleeves you will only be using a four millimeter hook and you will not switch for the ribbing so bear in mind that it's all completed with four millimeter hook you then want to grab your yarn, make a slip knot, and number of chains, so the length of your chain will be the length of the sleeve from the shoulder up until the wrist area. So you will need to measure that and see how many you need to chain. I will be doing 80. And I have my chain of 80 done. I will have 79 stitches and my 18th stitch is the one that I will skip. So I will have 79 stitches in total. For the sleeve cuff ribbing, I will also have 16 stitches, but it will be done with a single crochet instead of a half double crochet. And this is because if if you were to do a ribbing for the sleeve cuff doing half double crochet and using 3.5 millimeter hook it will be too wide it will be basically too big of a cuff and this cardigan calls for a very slim cuff so 
this is why we are doing single crochets and it is done with four millimeter hook because if single crochet ribbing done with 3.5 millimeter it would be then too tight and too small so just in case you wanted to do a half double crochet be aware that it will be wider and this pattern calls for a single crochet ribbing to achieve that look you see in the pictures so like i said again it's 16 stitches for me so i'm gonna go ahead and do 16 single crochets which you can do by going into the second chain from your hook pulling up a loop then yarn over and pull through two this is what i will repeat 16 times and once you're done your single crochets for the cuff ribbing you then want to do double crochets in remaining chains and as you can see i'm not switching the hook so it will all be done with a four millimeter one so let me just finish this first row and i will meet you then And I am now at the end of my row one for the sleeve, just doing my last double crochet. This is how it will look. So very similar to what you did for the back and front, just doing single crochets for the ribbing instead. To do row two, you want to chain three turn your work and above doubles you will do double crochets and above singles you will be doing single crochet back loop only so straight into the first one do double crochet and continue making them and i'm gonna do mine then i will see you for the single crochets and once you reach your single crochets like you did before you will be going into the back loop only if you turn your work like that you'll see those little v's that you would normally put your stitches in and instead you want to go into the back loop only and do single crochets in all of them once you're done you want to chain one turn your work and for row three, you will be doing back loop single crochets for as many stitches as you have single crochets and then double crochets. So it's 16 single crochets for me. And I'm doing them into the back loop only from now on. So it's only the first row that is different because it is worked into foundation chain. And once you've finished your back loop single crochets, you will need to do double crochets. It's 63 for me. It might be different number for you, but remember it's always the same stitch as you have below. Once you finish your row three, chain three to begin your next row and you will basically be repeating row two and three as many times as you need for this to be the width of your sleeve so that it does fit the widest uh, part of your arm and i'm gonna finish mine and show you when i did change color but it might be different to you if you decide to do different number of rows and i have my sleeve done here as you can see this is my cuff. If I fold it in half, this is how it will look, which you already saw in the beginning anyway. But just to show you how I did my rows of those straps. So basically I did five rows in main color, two rows in secondary, and then four rows in main color. So at the very beginning and the end, I have five rows on each side. And then I did two rows four rows two rows four rows two rows four rows and then again two rows for the very last time and once your sleeve is done you will need to go ahead and make the second one just exactly the same as this one
and now to join the back panel with the front you want to grab one piece and lay it on top of each other having it wrong sides out so that your right sides are in align them together and I have finished my front panel with a long tail if you haven't got that you can just grab yourself some yarn and basically sew it together so I have 11 rows and I will be sewing across and what I like to do is just to go from one side to the other like so and I'll do this till the very end and once you are done sewing you will have this tail so just hide it the same way you do for tails and once you've got your shoulder seam joined you want to grab your sleeve have both of these right side down so that this is your wrong side grab some stitch markers and secure your sleeve in place making sure that the middle of your sleeve is where your shoulder seam is at and then count the same amount of stitches to both sides so you can secure sleeve endings on each side and it is symmetrical then you will need to sew this fold it in half so the sleeve opening and your cardigan's side and then just basically repeat everything on the other side by joining your side panel and again the sleeve so i'm not going to show this it's going to be the same method i used to join this so let me just finish that and i will come back at the end now once you have your cardigan all assembled together you want to grab it from the right side and we will start working our ribbing on this left front piece so grab your four millimeter hook and I will be using the secondary color but you can go with the initial one as well and put your hook into the very first half double crochet here attach your yarn and for the ribbing I will be doing 15 stitches so that means I need to chain 16 and this is how it will look you can of course go in with a different number of chains but it is 15 for me and now starting into second chain from your hook go in with single crochets and do them in all chains when you come to an end you will need to do two slip stitches into the next two stitches of the side that you are working so go into the first one do a slip stitch then again into the second one chain one and you will need to skip those two slip stitches and go into your last single crochet so if it helps you can put a stitch marker every single time you finish your row so when you turn your work you know where to start so I'm just gonna turn for the second row and this is the chain this is the two slip stitches and this is my first single crochet i'm gonna go in into the back loop only and do my 15 single crochets so the stitch marker should help especially beginners not to get confused between the slip stitches and that you don't go into them and then end up with bigger number of stitches as it should always remain the same at the end you want to chain one turn your work and again do 15 single crochets into the back loop or any other number that you have chosen to do
And again when you come to an end to the side you will always be doing two slip stitches in the next two stitches so just like so then chain one turn your work skip the two slip stitches and go into the first single crochet and yeah you will need to repeat those rows two and three all around the cardigan so you will go up to the back panel and you will finish up on this side so I'm just gonna do my rows until I come across to the first buttonhole and I'll show you how to do that as well as I will tell where I will be placing mine and I now have 10 rows for the ribbing and row 11 is gonna be the row with the buttonhole so you want to make sure it's placed in the middle and since I have 15 stitches I will be doing 6 single crochets then chain 3 then again 6 single crochets. So just to start off you want to do 6 single crochets into the back loop as always. Then chain three, skip the next three and do six single crochets. And that's again into the back loop only. When you come to an end, you will need to do two slip stitches. chain one turn your work and then again do 15 single crochets into the back loop when you come to the chain three just go into that chain three space and do three normal single crochets and then again into the back loop chain one at the end and this is how you create a buttonhole so what I will be doing is I will be doing another 10 rows then again my row of buttonhole and I will repeat this until I have four in total and once that's done I'm just gonna continue with the ribbing rows until I come all around and before you continue make sure that your button fits through that buttonhole basically just like so grab it and try to pull it through and if it fits that's fine you can just continue with the rows doing only chain of three and if it doesn't fit you will need to work it out what fits for your buttons so I'm gonna continue and I will meet you then at the end and this is how my buttonholes look like so i have four of them in total and basically in between each there's 10 rows of ribbing done and when you finish your ribbing up until this point you will reach your rows so while you are working into stitches here it's rows here so just consider one row of double crochets as your two stitches so do two slip stitches above one row and when you come past the shoulder part where the stitches end and you come across rows instead so where you had your stitches for the back in between the shoulders it's gonna be above the rows so you want to do the slip stitches into the rows and I'm basically doing two above one row so for each row you will do two slip stitches and count it as your two stitches after that you just want to do your normal rows all around until you finish here and once you finish your ribbing all around all you left to do is to hide the tails and add buttons in so i've got three of them sewed on already and i will show you how i did this with my very last one but basically you want to count the rows from the bottom and 
the first button for me was on 11th row so I counted 11 rows and I placed it in the middle basically where those three single crochets were then again I continued counting and adding a buttons I have some thread that I split it from my yarn so I only grabbed one ply but you can also use just a sewing thread and you want to go from the back put your needle into one of the holes and pull that yarn through just having a bit on the wrong side then go into the next one and what I did is I only joined the top two and bottom two together so I will do this for a couple of times for the top one and then for the bottom holes as well once you're done sewing it I like to tie two knots with these tails then using your needle grab those tails in and you will need to hide them too so don't just cut it off as it might come undone but grab them and go under a few stitches just to secure it in place cut it off once you're done hiding it and that is it for the buttons and this is it i hope that you enjoyed this tutorial if you did don't forget to hit subscribe like this video and i'll see you in my next one